Is renting a DVC points a better option than becoming a DVC member? Today, I'm going to run you through the key calculations that you need to do if you're trying to make that decision. I'll also be showing you updated prices for going direct with Disney or on the resale market for your DVC membership so you can see all of these numbers together and make a decision that is right for you. Just a heads up, I'm not in any way, shape or form associated with Disney Vacation Club or with any of the rental sites that I'm going to show you today. I'm just running you through the kind of calculations that I think are really important before you make this decision. A very quick overview, Disney Vacation Club is Disney's timeshare. You can purchase direct with Disney or on the resale market. If you purchase direct and purchase a minimum number of points, there will be benefits that come with that contract that you won't get on the resale market. Now, I have plenty of videos on this, including a direct comparison between direct with Disney and resale purchases for DVC members. I'll link Link the playlist it's up in the eye and i'll link it down below now we're comparing that today to dvc rental in order to rent dvc points you're going to have to go via a third party website disney does not offer this directly now when you go via that third party website you're essentially buying some points from existing members they are renting their points to you now points will equate to time that you can purchase at Disney select hotels. So before you get overwhelmed, don't worry, sit back, grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee if that's what you prefer. I'm going to take you through the calculations step by step and lay it out for you in a way that hopefully you can really easily understand. If however you still have questions, drop them in the comment section down below. It's actually on the back of some questions that I'm doing this video today. Let's jump on in to the spreadsheet. Now I'm going to have to update some prices. This is actually the May 2023 spreadsheet. So the direct cost per point, it looks like that has remained the same. Now you can go on to the Disney Vacation Club website and you can see prices there. However, they will only show you the properties that are actively on sale. So that's kind of like the newer properties or properties that have had extensions. Now you can actually purchase properties that aren't actively on sale. You just have to reach out and speak to a DVC representative to do that. I have, however, included the price of those other resorts in the spreadsheet. Now, obviously anything that I have in there is subject to change. I'm just going with the latest information that I can find. So the prices here, you can see, for example, the villas at Disneyland, $230, Elani $217, Riviera $217, and the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa $217. So um, that all those prices are reflected again in the spreadsheet. You don't need to go looking for that information. Now there are some offers on at the moment. I don't build in the offers to the calculations because they are subject to change, but you can see here if you're going with a 150 vacation point contract at Elani, for example, you can save $3,585, which is actually quite a good saving. Now, we're also going to go to the DVC resale market. I like this website in particular because they have a blog here. And when you actually go to the blog, they will update the resale prices by giving you average sale prices. So here we go. Here's the one for June. Let's click into that. If we scroll on down, this is what we're looking for, this chart here. Now we actually have it going back historically all the way back to June, 2022, which is quite interesting because I like to see the trends in the prices. Um, so if we take a look at Animal Kingdom Lodge as a first, that is $120 based on average prices in June 2023. Now that's not the lowest it's been. It's been down at $116 in March 2023, um, but it's lower than last month. So last month was $124. Um, scrolling down. There's a bit of mix in, ten, in terms of the trend from last month to this month. So Bay Lake Terror has actually increased. Beach Club has gone down and Boardwalk has gone up slightly. Boulder Ridge has gone up slightly. Um, it seems like majority of them have actually gone up. Grand Floridian has taken a decent jump there. Now that might be down to the new offerings that we have at that resort. And Alkey West has gone up a little bit. Yeah, so most of them seem to actually have gone up. Um, but Animal Kingdom Lodge has just taken a slight dip. So let's go and update those numbers now. I will zip through them so you don't have to sit with me while I go through everyone. <laughs> 
All right, our spreadsheet is now updated. A couple of interesting observations. So one thing I noticed was actually that the Grand Californian has gone up quite a bit. It's now up at 305. It was up at 318 last month. But you can see throughout the last year, it's really been down in the 200s, going down as low as 243, I think is the lowest. And I think that's impacted by the fact that we've now got an additional resort out in Disneyland. So I guess some people are inclined to go and get their resale Grand Californian and then use those points for the Grand Californian as well as the new Disneyland hotel offering. So it's interesting just to see those kinds of trends. Another thing that I noticed actually was that Ulky West has gone up quite a bit. It's 125. It was down at like 110 earlier in the year. And uh, also Riviera, just looking at it comparable to other resorts, um, given that it has, it is a new resort. So, you know, there's a lot longer on that contract. It is quite low. And I know that's going to be heavily influenced by the fact that the resale Riviera contract has restrictions. I won't go into too much detail on this. I will do an updated video on sort of resale versus direct if that's something that you're interested in. I can do that, run that next month with um, July's numbers. Jumping back into our spreadsheet with those updated numbers, we can now see an updated percentage discount for resale. Now this is calculated on those resale numbers that I've just plugged in from June 2023 versus the direct cost with Disney. So you can see those percentages. In some cases, they're very chunky really good percentages. Take a look at this Grand Californian one though, 1.61%. That's the lowest I've ever seen in terms of a discount for resale. So I'm guessing maybe part of that is just down to availability. Maybe there just isn't many Grand Californian contracts available and maybe Disney are snatching them up as well. Now I have used 150 points as our base case. That is currently the minimum that you can purchase direct with Disney. They did go down to 100, then they brought it back up to 150. It is is aligned now with the minimum number of points you need for the benefits so at least that makes the calculation simpler so you need to buy 150 points and if you buy 150 points you also get the benefits so at least that bit is nice and clear. So what I've done then is calculated the cost of 150 points direct, 150 points on resale, and then the annual dues per point. So annual dues are an additional cost you have to pay per point every year of your membership. So I've just plugged in the latest values there. And then I've also plugged in the years left on the contract. So every different resort has a different span of years over which their contract lasts. And that's gonna be like the newer resorts have longer left, the older resorts have less time left. So um, when you purchase your contract, you will know what your contract end year is. You can see that all listed out here for the resorts. And this is just the actual number of years between 2023 and the contract end year. Okay. So I whizzed through that, I know, but like I say, there are other videos where I go through this in a bit more detail. Let's hone in on this total contract cost column. So let me explain this to you. This is the total cost of your contract from the day you sign it right the way up until the end of the contract, which in the case of Animal Kingdom Lodge, for example, is in 34 years time. Now this doesn't account for any inflation and changes to the annual dues. We're just taking today's prices and extrapolating it out across the 34 years. So this includes the upfront cost of Disney Vacation Club membership, which is the cost per point multiplied by the number of points, which in this case is 150. Then it takes the annual dues per point, multiplies that by 150, and then also multiplies it out across 34 years because you have to pay the annual dues every single year of your contract. Okay, so that's how we get to this price of $76,431. Now I know that is a lot of money, okay? $76,431. Now I think, I feel like a lot of people that look at the Disney Vacation Club cost, look at just the initial cost. That is this cost here, direct with Disney, 31,500, resale, 18,000. And don't consider the ongoing annual cost, the annual dues. Those annual dues are what bring us right the way up to 76,431. You are signing a financially binding contract that has you locked in for 34 years. Now I did get a couple of comments on this in my last video. Some people saying, oh, but you can always sell. And like, you know, maybe even some people that have actually made money on selling 
buying their contract direct at Disney and selling it on the resale market. I'm not seeing the same sort of value in terms of buying direct with Disney and selling on the resale market that I think we saw in years previous when you used to get some really good deals direct with Disney. And um, some people I get talking to that are Disney Vacation Club members when they tell me what they bought in for kind of hurts my soul a little bit. But I have seen that, you know, you there is a very active resale market you can sell. But let's just take the example of Animal Kingdom Lodge. The cost direct per point is currently at $210. Now, let's go back even like a couple of years ago, 2019, for example, I think I bought in maybe around $160, if I remember correctly. It could have even been a bit less than that. Even still, if I was to sell my contract today, I'm making a loss. Now, of course, I've managed to have a couple of years of use of the contract but I've also had to pay the annual dues so really is that a great financial move for me to have purchased that contract if I don't have the intention of keeping it for the full lifespan some people have definitely got very lucky where they've purchased contracts years ago and actually the price has only gone up which when you think about it is a little bit crazy because you actually have less time on the contract as the years goes by. So really, these contracts are less and less valuable as time goes on because there's only so many years left on them. Now, obviously, that doesn't take into account the fact that out in the market, you know, prices for like cash prices for staying at Disney have skyrocketed with less and less deals so actually the comparative value changes as well that's a lot of information to just dump on you there but it is just something that i find interesting yeah i just think it is important to reiterate the fact that this is a contract that you were like legally bound to pay and this is the kind of financial commitment we're talking about seventy six six thousand four hundred and thirty one dollars excluding any inflation in those annual dues okay just want to make that clear. Now, when we take that contract cost, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to compare it to the total resale contract cost. And actually, this is where we kind of see that there isn't that huge gap between direct and resale over the full length of the contract, because whether you've got your points direct or in resale, you still have to pay annual dues at the exact same price. Um, but still, you know, the difference in the upfront cost is still significant and it's still a material difference overall. The columns that say include tax, they are relevant for resorts that have an additional tax. That is none of the Walt Disney World resorts, but does include Ulani and the new Disneyland hotel offering. The Grand Californian actually also has the tax, but it's embedded in the cost per point. So there is no difference in those calculations. Moving across then to the total contract cost per year. What that does is just take our total contract cost and divide it by the number of years left on the contract to kind of give you like an average cost of your contract as a whole if you were to look at it individually across every year that you have the contract and again we see some interesting things I know I've pointed this out before but there are some resorts that are actually very expensive on a year-by-year -year basis and that's mainly because they don't actually have that many years left on their contract I have mentioned Beach Club a few times because I do think it's a very expensive resort I think unless you are set on beach club as being the only resort that you want to go and stay in it is very expensive comparatively but of course if your heart's set on beach club it still might work out as a good option for you particularly if your other option is going to be paying cash direct with disney okay so moving on and over we have the same calculations for resale so the cost per year and again you can compare those numbers now the next step in the calculation is the one that i think a lot of people either just don't think about or perhaps struggle to understand, but this is the calculation we also need to do to be able to compare to those rented points. And that is to think about the kind of stay that you're gonna have. Now, for me personally, traveling over from the UK, I like to do a two week trip. And so I might even just do one week on one trip and one week on another trip, but I like to calculate it on a two week basis. Now, the other reason for using two weeks as the comparative value is because it also gets us over that minimum, the 150 minimum. So you'll see um, Animal Kingdom Lodge just gets over that 150 point requirement with us looking at two weeks. You can, of course, adjust this for your own way of staying on site. Just remember to keep in mind that minimum if you are going to look at that direct contract. If you're going to resell, you can kind of ignore it. But I have found that when I look on the resale market, a lot of the contracts are on the higher end in terms of number of points. So yeah, just bear in mind the fact that, you know, you are bound by the kind of contract that you can get. But definitely take a look and see what kind of a trip you would normally do and figure out how many points you would need for that kind of a trip. 
Now, if you're trying to calculate how many points you need for your kind of trip, I like to use David's Vacation Club Rentals, the website. They just have a really good cost calculator. So if we click into the cost calculator here, you can just plug in your dates. Like if I did a week in September, for example, and then when you scroll down here, just change to display points and it will switch and show you the points that you need for all the different room categories along the way. Now, one thing that we won't be able to see is availability. We can just see the number of points for that stay that we've plugged in. And then you can use that as your basis for your calculation. We will come back to that calculator now in a sec. So now what I've done basically is looked at the points requirements for two weeks in a standard studio in September. So I think I've replicated that here. So yeah, 152 in a standard studio in Animal Kingdom Lodge. And that's what we see here in the spreadsheet. And then essentially what I've done is calculated what it would cost you in terms of your DVC contract each year for that trip. So it's kind of similar to the total cost of the contract per year, except we're going off the requirement of 152 points versus the 150 contract that we originally looked at. If we look at another resort, it could be like, this is 258, that's the Grand Californian. Um, if we look at another resort here, Grand Floridian, let's actually change our view here so I don't have to keep sliding back and forth. Why on earth would I be doing that when I could just do this? There we go. Whereas like if we look at Hilton Head 232, Old Key West 142. So actually the Old Key West two week calculation does not meet the minimum with Disney. So you actually technically couldn't get this contract, but I just didn't want to, I just needed to pick a time frame for a comparison. And um, so with Old Key West, it actually wouldn't be possible to get 142. You would have to get the 150 that's calculated over on the left there. But anyway, we're just we're just doing some comparisons. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna input the rental prices for the exact same period of time for comparative purposes. So let's go into the same chart that I have here that was showing me the points, and we're gonna switch over to display cost. Okay, so this is the cash price that you will pay with David's Vacation Club Rentals to rent the exact same rooms that we're talking about when we've done our calculation before. So let's take, for example, Animal Kingdom Standard View. It is 3192 for a studio. Now you'll see there's a value studio that's cheaper, almost impossible to get, especially if you're not a member and you're trying to get it through a rental site. I actually managed it once a few years ago, but anyway, it's almost impossible, I'd say, even as a Vacation Club member, I really struggle to get that room. Um, so it is, like I say, almost impossible. So I've just gone with a standard because it's a nice way of comparing across the different resorts. So let's plug that in, 3192. Let's go 3192. Okay, so 3192 versus the direct price over the 34 years and the resale price over the 34 years. Let's plug in the rest of those. As I'm plugging some of these in, I think it's worth noting that if you go onto this calculator and you see your cash price, all that means is that's the price you'll pay if they can get you the points. And that's a big if, they can get you the points. So the thing that this doesn't show you, which I find terribly frustrating, I'm guessing it's just not really possible, but um, if you go onto a rental website like this one, like any of the others, you don't actually see availability. So there are two elements to availability when you're renting from a store, like a DVC rental store. And that is one, that they can match you up with a member that has the points that you need. And two, that they can actually secure the reservation with Disney, like on the Disney Vacation Club website. Now they don't tell you either of those things when you go and look at the cost calculator or when you put in an inquiry or when you try to book. And um, obviously, you know, that's for a number of reasons, but it's I imagine quite difficult to check for a match automatically when you put a request in. Um, but what I would suggest if you do happen to have somebody that you know that's a Disney Vacation Club member, um, get them to pop on and see if there's actually availability at the resort. Because if there's no availability at the resort, doesn't matter whether a member has the points to rent you or not, you can't book your reservation. Availability has only really gotten worse. It does require you to book quite far in advance. Now, there are also additional charges that some of the vacation 
rental companies will charge you if you want to book further in advance. And the way that works is they're using the benefit that a member has at their home resort. Whatever your home resort is, you can book 11 months in advance versus if a resort is not your home resort, you can book it seven months in advance. And if you're wanting to book within that early window, so 11 to seven months, they're also charging a premium there as well. So just bear all of that in mind. Obviously there's different prices on different websites, etc. But we're gonna go with assuming that there's availability in September at these resorts, which I actually know there is not because uh, it's pretty much gone at this stage in July. But I just think September is a good comparative month. So let's go ahead with it. So boardwalk, we're gonna go two, nine, eight, two. And obviously, like again, you can plug in your own numbers for your own situation. This spreadsheet is going to be linked below. If you want to use the spreadsheet, you need to make a copy of the spreadsheet and then you can edit away to your heart's content. I don't allow editors on the spreadsheet, obviously, because you could just do whatever. Um, and even if you're just playing around with it and putting in your personal numbers, you're kind of... Um, distorting it for everybody else so play around with it to your heart's content but make a copy of it you can't edit the actual file that's linked down below all right so i've now completed the rental prices section for the september period so we're going to do rental versus direct and we're going to do rental let's just do rent rent is a lot easier than <laughs> rental um saves me a couple of characters all right so we'll take the rental price and we'll subtract the DVC price. Let's copy that down. And then we'll do the same with the resale price. And let's copy that down. Let's take a look at the outcome now of renting versus direct and renting versus resale. Some interesting findings. Beach Club has actually come up cheaper by renting points. And so has Boardwalk versus having a direct contract with Disney at current prices. I have been harping on saying that I think Beach Club is overpriced and I think this proves it. The fact that you can go out and rent Beach Club points from a member and save versus the annual cost for that member if they purchase their contract this year. Now, obviously, a lot of members that are renting have their contracts years. They're probably still in a better financial position. But we're talking about people that want to become members today, either direct or on the resale market versus people that want to continue renting. Now in other scenarios, there are significant savings. So let's take a look. Ulani is a lot cheaper in terms of the annual cost as a member. What else is quite high? Grand Floridian is $2,000 cheaper in the year. Polynesian is a good bit cheaper. Riviera is a good bit cheaper. And then you look over at the resale market and it's all cheaper. Um, but also, you know, the resale market, again, you won't have those benefits direct with Disney. But if that's not something you care about, you can definitely save a lot of money. So even with this in consideration, so even with for the majority of cases, it is cheaper on an annualized basis to be a member than to rent. You also have to think about the fact that if you're renting, you are just in a transaction where you go, you rent the points, you stay, and you've no other obligations. You don't have to pay the same price next year. You're not bound into a 34, 50 year contract where you have financial obligations. You can just come, transact, and be done, and you've no additional worries or overheads to think about. Now, if you know for a fact that you are going to travel to Disney World almost every year and that, you know, the contract really is going to work for you, obviously membership is something to think about when you're seeing these kinds of savings on an annualized basis. But just do remember about the longevity of that contract. You can look to rent to recoup some money and pay off annual dues. So maybe it doesn't cost you anything year on year to keep on the membership. But I do think you really want to be thinking out into the future and thinking that you are going to be traveling to Disney a lot for it to actually make sense. In my particular situation, it does make sense. I'm happy that I purchased when I did and I'm happy when I look at the cash prices and the rental prices that I can save on a year by year basis. Let's talk about some of the non-financial considerations. So as a Disney Vacation Club member, when I make a reservation, I have complete control of that reservation. I log into the portal. I can check the availability. I can make the reservation. I can add people, take them away, change the reservation, even set up a waitlist request if there's a resort that's not available at the time that I'm booking to replace my reservation. There's lots of, I guess, 
additional flexibilities that you're just not going to get if you go to the rental market and it's also the fact that it's your membership under your control and you just won't have any issues if you need to speak to Disney about the reservation etc because it's all under your name. Now if you go on the rental market as I said when you're booking you can't see availability the reservation is not your reservation. It's still the member's reservation. They've just made it on your behalf with your details. If you want to change it, there may be some fees. There may even not be the option of changing, uh, depending on the type of contract that you have signed with a third party. So do read the T's and C's very, very carefully. One thing that really put me off the rental market and I'm not trying to dissuade anybody I'm just telling you my personal reason for no longer using the rental market is that I did have some friends that had really bad experiences when we were unable to travel to the US where they were just either not able to recoup any of the funds or you know only got a really small portion back because you know you have signed a contract and I guess that just doesn't cover you without additional insurances and actually a lot of travel insurance policies exclude timeshares from the cover that they give you in terms of a vacation cancellation so just make sure you're fully aware of the T's and C's with the third party of your travel insurance cover and you know you're maybe just taking a risk that if something were to happen unexpected and you can't go on this vacation that you may be losing that money obviously that's a bit different to then book and direct with Disney in cash where you'll have a really good and flexible cancellation policy and also the grace and discretion of Disney which they tend to exercise in those sorts of cases and as a member where you can cancel up to 30 days in advance or within 30 days and I think then your points just get locked into a more restricted ability to use situation I hope this has given you food for thought if you are looking at renting versus becoming a member I think with a lot of the cases of these comparisons, so whether it's renting or cash prices with Disney, uh, for the most part, if you extrapolate your contract over the number of years and you look at booking uh, your time at Walt Disney World, you probably are going to save money if your particular circumstance would require 150 points or more at a Disney World resort or less than that if you can get a resale contract that is less points. I think if you're actually going to utilize your contract every single year then you probably are going to save money. I just think that that's quite a niche scenario <laughs> and so yeah I think Vacation Club might be right for you under specific circumstances but it's not right for a lot of people and I think a lot of people maybe get sucked in when they're on a holiday and don't really think about like how much it would actually take to use up the full value of their contract every single year. Another thing just to keep an eye on if you are looking at different resorts is back to that two week standard studio points template that I've given you here. Again, go onto the cost calculator and check what would suit your particular vacation style and really make sure you take that step. I think a lot of people miss that step, but it's really crucial because different resorts have different point requirements and have those points change as well, depending on how busy the time of year is that you like to travel. So really do take this and fit it out for your personal circumstances and you might get a completely different result than what I'm looking at here. Again, I hope that's been helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop any of your questions down in the comments down below. I've had a lot of people ask me for very specific scenarios, but the idea of these videos is to give you the template to allow you to take it away and to calculate your own scenario. Because if I was to do everyone's different circumstances, I'd probably have a million videos on this at this time. But I think what I might actually start doing is maybe doing some YouTube shorts based on people's specific requests. If that's something you're interested in, again, let me know your question or scenario down in the comments down below. And I might start creating a few of those little short videos just taking a specific question and working it out through the calculation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.